Welcome to another edition of Forecast Lab. We have a strong frontal system approaching the northwest coast of the U.S. Let's take a look at the surface map. So the best way to analyze this, let's divide this into a few key areas. You remember that very strong cold air mass that came through earlier this week, and uh, that's it right there. Centered on the east coast, the ridge axis from Virginia through the Carolinas and into Alabama. So to illustrate that, let's go back to last Friday. And this is a large chunk of cold air coming out of Canada with a 1035 millibar high. And some of that spreads into the Great Basin area as well. See, there it is. Some of it going into the north central U.S., some of it going into Nevada and Idaho. So we're up to Sunday and Monday spilling south into the Great Plains, the Midwest, and into the northeastern U.S., and another little reinforcement on Tuesday. And that brings us up to the current time. Obviously, a lot of cold air being eroded and modified across the country, and there's that little reinforcing shot that we have right now. So this is not really too far off. It even has that approaching weather system off of Oregon. So the models seven days out are really not too bad. So this whole area here has had one more cold night, but the warm-up is beginning. We're kicking the winds around to the south through the Midwest region and the Southern Plains, and we're starting to see the start of tropical air filtering into South Texas. Look at those dew points there, 60 around Corpus Christi. And we've got the start of a dry line right there in Texas. Now, that cold air mass did also push a lot of cold air into the central part of Mexico. And I think if you went and analyzed this, you could probably find a little stationary front through here. The winds are still out of the east at Phoenix. So that's just a little bit of residual cold air across the southwestern deserts. And this air mass here is part of that. That's some of that cold air that moved into the Great Basin area earlier this week. And it stagnated. There's some fog in Stratus from Spokane down to Boise. And as far as the changes coming up, well, some more Canadian air coming south, but the pressure's very weak, 10, 22 millibars in that high. So this is a very lethargic push of cold air, not really going to do much. In fact, you can see the wind's already coming around to the south in western Saskatchewan. However, this Pacific system, very strong along the west coast, and this will be making its way inland later tonight. Going region by region. Well, it looks like we have some mountain wave activity in Vermont and some other waves in western New York and around Toronto. You can see those are really not moving very much. That's going to be mid-cloud, very thick layers of alt cumulus, and above that, some cirrus spreading across the area. Overall, though, fair skies across the entire northeast region. The 500 millibar chart not showing a whole lot of ascent in that region. Maybe a couple of weak waves moving through the northeastern U.S. and the Great Lakes. But some of that cloud is probably coming from isentropic lift. Now, this is an isentropic chart for 300 Kelvin. Now, the height of this level really depends on the characteristics of the air mass below you. Now, we do have a lot of humidity through that layer, which corresponds to that cloud material, but where did it come from? Well, you can see the winds along the 300 Kelvin surface blowing from southwest to northeast, and it's climbing from lower levels to higher levels because there is cold air across the eastern U.S. Isentropic surfaces follow layers of constant potential temperature. In this case, the 300 Kelvin layer is going to be pretty close to the ground in places like Kansas. It's at a level of 800 millibars. What is that in feet? Well, I'm going to show you real quick. And you're not going to see this very much on this channel because this is not really the proper way to display these isentropic charts, but you can see the levels in feet 5,000 feet MSL, 8,000, 7,000. And as you go further into New York, they get up to 13,000 feet. So this is much higher. This is up in the altocumulus, altostratus regime, and this is closer to the stratocumulus regime. 
any air that's moving from here to there ascends from about 5,000 up to about 13 to 14,000. And with this humidity in place, it's going to saturate and produce cloud material. So that's probably part of the process taking place across the Great Lakes. So as a result, we get this, and wherever you have stronger cyclonic circulation, that's going to amplify the sinking motion and rising motion on either side. The southeast not looking too bad, the ridge shifting off towards the east, and the flow becoming easterly as it rounds that ridge. Frost advisory in central Georgia from Athens down to LaGrange. That whole frost area is southwest through southeast of Atlanta, temperatures down to 33 degrees, but patchy frost may still form in that area. In the southern plains, as we mentioned, the very, very start of a dry line right there near the Serrano del Burro Mountains, and we're getting that sultry air starting up around Corpus Christi, even a little sea breeze, very hard to find it, but that's it right there, dividing the cumulus inland from the relatively fair weather along the coast. And further up north in Colorado, some more mountain wave activity around Pueblo, down towards Walsenburg. It's going to be that stuff right there. So probably going to be a bit of a spectacular sunset later this evening, right around here, probably a good opportunity to get some great cloud photos. And with that mountain wave activity, turbulence. Yeah, right there around Denver. Some pilot reports coming out, light to moderate turbulence around 16,000 feet. Other pilot reports of turbulence here and there. And that does tend to be pretty common in the Rockies when we have a strong zonal component perpendicular to the mountains. And right there around Wyoming, the winds are blowing 80 knots at 500 millibars with a little bit weaker flow down to the south. And the trend over the weekend, a little bit of weakening by Sunday, but we're really bringing in those strong winds towards Monday and Tuesday as the polar front jet snakes its way into the Great Basin area. And yes, things are getting active on the west coast. You can see that this evening the mid-tropospheric ridge axis is located from California up to Washington. And now we're starting to open up that southwesterly flow. So by tomorrow, series of upper-level disturbances crossing Oregon and Washington. Another strong trough right there. That's going to be during the day on Sunday. And then we start getting the upper level low moving inland for Monday. And by that time, strongly channeled jet from San Francisco up to Salt Lake City. So a continuation of bad weather across the Great Basin area and the northern Rockies. But for the time being, we just have this old stagnant polar high. And of course, the weather system will be coming in from the west as we go into the weekend. So that's it right there. Some rain along the Alaskan coast, whenever you have an onshore component this time of year, that tends to be a wet pattern. And when it's reversed, when we have an offshore component with, you know, strong polar high across Yukon, that tends to clear things out, although it gets very cold whenever that happens. All right, going up to Alaska. Yeah, definitely some inclement weather. You can see the pressure varies from about 1034 millibars at Barrow down to about 1004 millibars at Anchorage. And whenever we have that strong gradient, well, we talked about the Santa Ana winds back last weekend. We don't get Santa Ana winds there, but it will be cold and blustery when this pattern sets up. And that's indeed the case. We've got high wind warnings north of Fairbanks along the Dalton Highway. Winds expected to gust up to 60 miles an hour today and tomorrow. And we've got a series of wind advisories all through this area just north of Fairbanks. Fairbanks itself looking for gusts up to 40 miles an hour. And a little further south, closer to this little stationary front, we do have advisories for light freezing rain for today, possibly a tenth of an inch right in that region there. Heading out east, northerly flow, but this is recirculated polar air, not coming from the polar regions, but coming more from 
the Labrador Sea, so temperatures here are mostly above zero. And as you go into the Northwest Territories, coming up to teens and 20s, but still some f snow across the Hudson Bay region and this cold air advection helping to drive this weather system coming out of James Bay. And you can see out there in Quebec, it is rain instead of snow. Well north of Montreal, rain up towards the border of Labrador. And some reports of a November heat wave in Japan. I can't really confirm this, but 300 out of 900 stations in Japan reportedly set their records for November. And we can see temperatures are up in the 70s. 75 there at Tokyo, 73 at Hiroshima, and 77 on Kyushu Island. 77 down there at uh, Pusan, and down into China, 80s showing up, 84 there at Shanghai, and 84 at Hong Kong. So this is definitely well above normal. Temperatures this time of year should be in the 40s and 50s. So let's take a look at the weather closer to home. Atmospheric River is inbound into the northwestern U.S. Those values at this present time up to 1,400 offshore. Now typically this does diminish as it comes onshore, but a good slug of 1,000 into the Portland area, Astoria, and the west coast of Washington. And some of it trailing down into northwestern California. They are not going to see very much precip there in California They've trended those amounts down a little bit, only looking for about a half inch to one inch around Eureka and less than half an inch in Northern California. So this little string bean of IVT is not really going to do very much. One weaker slug coming in for Sunday, and then that's going to be it for a few days. Things start to quiet down. Anticyclogenesis in the Eastern Pacific through much of the week. And most of the interesting weather will probably shift into the other part of North America. Looks like around midweek, though, some activity in southeastern Alaska, but just not much on the west coast for the immediate future there. Okay, let's take a look at the short-range forecast, and these are AWIPS graphics. AWIPS is the system used in National Weather Service forecast offices. This is what they look at to prepare their forecasts. So you're seeing the same basic graphics. So we've got this Alberta Clipper extending kind of like that through Iowa into Illinois, a few weeks showers out towards Lake Michigan, and then this strong system off of Oregon coming onshore. And we can see that that is warm air advection building along the Oregon coast. Okay, so going into tonight, rain bands coming into Seattle, and into Portland. Looks like maybe the cold front is coming onshore for tomorrow. So this is going to be tomorrow morning around dawn. Pretty good chunk of lift right there along that front. Maybe a few claps of thunder in there, perhaps. The Alberta Clipper in the central U.S., I think that's going to be it right there. Let me just check that. Yeah, just kind of drifting to the east. Very weak precip fields moving into Lake Erie. And most of this will be rain. Looks like the freezing levels will be above seven, 8,000. So the only problems will be way up there in the higher mountains and into the northern Rockies around the Bitterroot Range. Looks like the front's coming inland into the desert areas for later Saturday, probably right in there. And we start getting the cold air advection and some improvement in the conditions in Seattle and Portland. Our Alberta Clipper looks like that is barely showing up. Little coastal system there off of the Carolinas. And then going into Sunday. Yeah, it looks like a very fast moving system right there. That, yeah, that came across Montana very swiftly overnight into Sunday. So at this point, one little front right there, another front there, and an occlusion extending north and most of the precept north of that warm front. Then we get our next system with that next atmospheric river for Monday. Not quite as strong, but it will be blustery once again. And then for our very last chart for late Monday, looking like this. One system in the Great Lakes, 
another in the Pacific. And I think the main front is going to be right there. So some snow, some rain in Wyoming, Idaho, the Great Basin area, and then the southern occlusion up there to the north. And where is our wintry Arctic air? Let's take a look at that. This is going to be the temperature fields indicated by the shading. I've got a temperature scale up at the top, so any of the purple is going to be sub-freezing. So most of that is up there on the Arctic ice pack. Some cold air on the North Slope and in the Northwest Territories, but nothing really bringing that down. So most of that will stay up there in Northern Canada. One little block of cold air dislodging and moving into the Great Lakes area for midweek. And looks like most of the cold air heads into Quebec. Starting to see those purples there, so that's going to be a good outbreak of maybe single digits and a few below zero temperatures. And then another little burst right there. That's probably going to take a similar track later next week, crossing the Labrador Sea and re-emerging out there in Quebec. Not quite as strong. So we're not looking at a whole lot of cold air over the next week. Most of that locked up there in the Canadian Arctic. But out there in Siberia, yeah, quite a bit of it. Temperature off the scale. At places like Oymyakon, the cold pole, that's all right there in that area. So that's going to be where most of the cold air is going to be for the time being. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I do want to thank one of our Patreon supporters, Terry A. Taylor, for a very generous increase in your pledge. Thank you very much for that. I greatly appreciate that. And as for everybody else, we'll see you back here on Monday for the supporters. If you're not a supporter, there is the link on how to get that set up. And for everybody else, we will see you back here on Wednesday. Hope you have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.